Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite movie growing up was The Princess Diaries with really? Anne Hathaway. Have you ever seen it? Of course. The Princess of Genovia. <laughs> If anyone is not watching us in the Facebook group right now, which by the way, every week we film a podcast episode live in our Facebook group. So if you're not a part of our Facebook community, this is where all the magic happens, all the fun. Definitely go to the show notes. It's linked there and you can just copy and paste and join us. But anyway, if you watch, you can see Bridget waving like she is a princess, the princess of Genovia. Anyways, okay. So... <laughs> Today we have a really juicy topic everyone's been talking about, threads. So we will be discussing today social media, threads, algorithms, and sustainable practices. So I just want to like get the elephant out of the room. Bridget, did you join threads? I did. And normally I am, normally I'm just the observer of these things. Mm. So it is interesting that I did this because normally I'm like, when people do one thing, I I'm such a rebel. I like to go the opposite way, okay. but this time I was like, I'm going to lean in. And for me, I always loved Twitter growing up. I had like, I would just, and things would fly out. So I'm somewhat excited personally to be the observer for the first few weeks and just like, see what happens. So I did, which is surprising. And what about you? So I did not join threads. Also, I loved Twitter back in the day too. And my tweets are embarrassing. They're like 2009 <laughs> Facebook days. Like we just, everything we read, we're like, Ooh, maybe I shouldn't have shared that on the internet. Um, so I was thinking about the same thing with threads, but I got really overwhelmed <clears throat> when people started posting about it yesterday. And I felt like it was almost a rat race. And to me, I was like, like people were posting about it and they were like, oh my God, you need to monetize on this, monetize on it. Mon that was the word that I kept reading was like monetize on threads. And to me, it gave me that really anxious feeling of people just like trying to force money at something. Mm -hmm. And so that is why I didn't, but I also got a lot of positive responses from friends who like joined and they were saying things like I'm a writer or oh I love that I get to share little nuggets and so there are a lot of positive things about the app I just personally was like I don't know how I feel about this yet yeah it's so interesting that you saw all the like push about monetize it because yeah. I didn't see that at all which is maybe so it's funny. the places I'm hanging out in I don't know <laughs> maybe I should get out of those <laughs> but um you know what my first thought about it was um, my first thought was, you know, in like certain Facebook groups, business entrepreneurship groups, you see a lot of those posts that are like, I made a lot of money on TikTok. Do you want my guide for how to do it? And there's a bunch of people just getting in and it, it felt like that freebie energy, yeah. which freaked me out because I feel like there's so many groups on Facebook that I, I used to love. And I started my business actually using some of those Facebook groups. And now they have totally pivoted to no human connection, totally different, which is why Bridget and I are totally doing things differently in our Facebook group. And everyone is just like friends in there and just celebrating their wins and asking real meaningful questions for their businesses. But um, yeah. And then I got a lot of discussions about how it's going to be similar to Clubhouse where it pops off. What was interesting when you said observer, I saw a, um, one of my clients is a award-winning psychologist. She's a genius. She posted that she read from meta. I think that this app is going to be a social experiment. And I was like, huh, what does that mean? That's super interesting. Yeah. I, I just don't, like don't like quote me. It might not have been meta. It might've been something else, but I remember her saying that it was like some big platform. Maybe it's not from them specifically, but somebody wrote that it's a social experiment. And she was like, as a psychologist, I'm really excited to see how this plays out. But she, I mean, she joined threads. Super interesting. What I did think like right away though, people are so quick to just go to the next thing, thinking that that's going to be like their saving grace. Totally. And I was thinking yesterday, I was like, I was almost going to post it. I was like, this is controversial. I was mm -hmm. like, if, if you think that, you know, going to threads is going to be the answer to your prayers in business, there's something already off because if those things aren't landing on the other platforms that you're, you know, using, 
there's typically a, a problem with your message or your positioning or your offer or like the frequency in which you talk about your work. So totally. I just do, that's why I like to watch. Cause I'm like, how are people going to use this? Are they just going to be like pushing? Th I just want to watch. I'm yeah. curious. I'm genuinely curious how this is going to go down. Yeah. I do like that. I'm kind of able to observe too, because everyone's posting their threads on their social stories and their Instagram stories. So I'm like, Oh, this is what people are saying on here. Like this morning I was you know, clicking away on social media as one does. And I saw everybody reposting their threads. It's, it's very aesthetic. The threads social post. I, I thought that somebody made it and just like created a very pretty like Canva. <laughs> uh, this is where I'm still a grandma, Lydia, because I was like, wow, this is so beautiful. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, threads made this. Got it. But um, yeah, I'm interested to see because there was one platform that I hopped over to when clubhouse dropped, I was all in, I had a room in it. Like I'm, you joined the room. Yeah, yeah, I did. What's really funny is yesterday I had a memory come up on Facebook. That was about the connector room from clubhouse. And it was like, everyone joined. I'm like, wow, just a few years ago to this date, I was running a room on Clubhouse and Clubhouse is basically no more. I do know some people that still use it, but I think it's very niche um, to very specific communities, whereas it used to be like everyone was on it. But I did like Clubhouse because you could use your voice and I felt yeah. like it was like free seminars that you could go to. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah. You know, it's a good question for us to ponder what makes a social channel succeed versus the ones that get the, like Vine got that like exciting um, oh, yeah. thing right away and then just kind of died off. And I think there's another one called like Lemon Tree or something. Oh, Lemon 8. Oh. <laughs> okay. I actually think that one's really cute. I, I um, downloaded it recently. So you can post pictures and you can write on them really. It's, it's all about aesthetics on that site. So I I'm like, it. Yep. I'm like, wow, this is like literally like Pinterest and Instagram had a baby and made it even more beautiful. I was like, if I could just look at this beautiful, this beautiful, inst like, uh, it's almost like Instagram, I guess every day I'd be like a happy camper. Hmm. So I think when we think about social platforms, I think we need to also think about like what works for us. So I love how you said that you liked threads because you like to write me. I love to write too but I get like overwhelmed by little tiny blips sometimes. And I like to write long format. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And this is different. It's like, how am I supposed to say everything I want to say in like one short line? Yeah. So, and I actually really like TikTok. I think it's fun. If Do anyone's using it a lot, I like never go on. I repurpose a lot from my Instagram onto yeah. TikTok. Yeah. But I do like, to like send things to my friends. I learn a lot on TikTok. Like I learn a lot. What did I learn recently? Let's think. Other than like news stuff, because people love to post about news. I learned all the like tips in the kitchen. Like the avocado one was big where you like put avocado in water and it keeps it for like two, three weeks or something crazy. Well, yeah, I'm just having this like really interesting observation. So when I was in school and even when I used to go to church growing up, I never comprehended what they were saying unless I saw a visual written Ooh. and I'm just recognizing that the way I process and learn is through yeah. reading written text. So for me, I think TikTok always was overwhelming because I was like, oh, the it's too many like visual moving things for me. Whereas on Instagram, I love the carousels where, it, where it's actually like teaching you something. And that's why I love Reddit. You love Reddit? I feel like you're like a secret nerdy boy gamer I hope yeah. nobody takes offense to this but all of my guy friends that are like gamers are obsessed with reddit they're like yeah I read this thing on reddit I'm like oh and again another really like value add website reddit is one of the only or one of the only sites that never updated their platform yeah. it looks like it's still operating in like the early 2000s but the content is there and yep. the users are obsessed. Obsessed. Same thing with Twitter too, though. I have a lot of friends that are diehard Twitter fans. And so I'm really interested to see how this plays out because is it going to keep people excited? Like I think Instagram wants to create a platform that's kind of competitive to Twitter. Yes. But if you don't already have a Twitter, is it actually going to interest you? 
is my you know, question. This is, this is a good question too, because Instagram is always changing things and they're always like focused on that, like quick, um, what would it be? Dopamine hit for us yeah. as the consumer. I think sites with the best longevity are actually like Twitter has withstand the tell of time. A lot of people use it. Reddit, a yeah. lot of people use it, even though it's like, you know, a little bit not talked about as much, but there is a little bit more of this like sustainability with the platform because they don't change it all the time. It's like people know what they're expecting. And especially as people who create content on these platforms, we're content creators, mm-hmm. content creators. Um, you know, it is frustrating to have these things change all the time because yeah. we used to be able to make cool reels or even just like do a nice post and it would get a certain amount of reach and then they've changed things. So it's frustrating. Yeah. And I think that Instagram probably does that on purpose. They do. You know, I, when reels like first came out, I would get like 14,000 likes on my reels. I was like, I'm about to pop off. Everyone call the paparazzi. I'm yeah. getting famous right now today. Today's the day. Now it's like 300, 400 views, which is honestly offensive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, my stuff is so good. (laughs) Anyways, um, I think everyone feels that way as a content creator, but um, it's really interesting. And and Bridget and I were talking about this and like social platforms are extremely important. They are nurturing platforms where we already have an audience and it's like, how can we keep them engaged? How can we, how can we talk to them in a very easy way? How can we let them know what's going on? To me, unless you are a, creator, influencer, somebody who has really like spent time to master these platforms. Do I necessarily think it is worth your time? Cause time is money as a business owner. Is it worth your time to really try to spend all this time, like staying on these apps and trying to grow them and monetize from them as opposed to traditional outlets that always work. And so when we're talking about this, it's like media has been around since who freaking knows, maybe like the 17, maybe longer than that. Maybe like Jesus had his own, like, (laughs) I'm going to be like Joe Rogan and look it up right now. I'm going to be like Joe Rogan's assistant. He's like, Hey, can you like look that up? Look that number up for us. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, uh, Jamie, can you look this up? Jamie is this guy. Okay. I'll be Jamie. (laughs) Be Jamie. And then you hear Jamie just like really faint in the background. He's like, Hey, I looked it up. It's uh, about 250,000 years ago. (laughs) Okay. There is something from the 1700s that called the gentleman's magazine. Wait, can we laugh? I was like the 1700s. And I'm like, wait, Jesus's newspaper. You never know. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But this has been around for a really long time. There have been writers. Writers need sources to support their stories. And so therefore are always looking for sources, always looking for products, always looking for expert commentary, people to interview, to support the story angle that they want to cover. And so when it comes to being sustainable in these types of outlets, monetizing and actually growing your audience, getting in front of newer audiences, this works every time. Like this is what works. And so, yeah. Bridget and I were just kind of weighing the pros and cons of like, what does social media mean to us? What does it mean to you? Where do you want to put your time and energy in terms of monetization? Because that's what I saw when everyone was talking about threads yesterday. It was like, you have to monetize on this platform. I'm like, is it actually going to bring you money though? Mm -hmm. That's very, if that's the goal. What I think about social media is I'm so grateful for it. Yeah, I mean, Truly. me too. You know, I mean, that's to how I brought time. my business online in 2017. I had like a Facebook group where I was just doing some yoga with some people. And then that just ultimately grew into something so much bigger. It's connected you and I together. Like yeah. the tool for connection <laughs> and presence is really important. But where I see things go wrong for business owners. Um, is typically in like that lead generation audience growth part of their business. Because if they're always just posting to their audience, it's going to start feeling stale. Like it's no wonder why the sales aren't coming in. Cause you're just speaking to the same people over and over and over again. And I totally. like went through a period of burnout at the end of like last year and noticed that I had really stopped, like sales were feeling slower, but I had really stopped bringing new people into my world. I had stopped getting on podcasts because I was so tired. I had stopped doing some of the things that were helping me grow the audience from the very beginning. And I think this is a big 
mm, like missed opportunity for people to recognize that we need to have the presence on the social platforms. But as you say, it has to be for nurturing. And then what are the ways that we can actually bring more new eyes onto our business to then convert into yep. our products, our programs, our services? Like we need to look at it through a different lens and oh gosh, I'm getting excited. Yeah. Cause I think that what you're saying is so important. Like we, I think that social media can definitely be a starting point because we have a community already, whether you are, you know, have a business or not, when you start, you have a community of people already there. Cause you're probably using social media for personal reasons. And then you're able to sell from them. But when you're getting to a point where you're exhausting your audience and you're not able to grow because the algorithm has shifted every few weeks, or like you can't figure out how to make something hit and it gets so freaking frustrating. I understand. Like there are some days where like, I'll post something in a Facebook group or on my Instagram. And I'm like, why is it not hitting? This was genius. I think this is amazing. And sometimes cash, it's cow. Not cash cow. I posted about it being anyways, I posted about the media being a cash cow. Cause it totally is whatever. But, um, anyways, there are some days where your post, it doesn't matter if it's valuable or not. It's just not going to hit. It could be the time it could that you posted, which is also a thing that you need to worry about. And so it's like, how do we not worry about this stuff? Let our content get posted. Let our community see it. Whoever's meant to see it will see it. And then use really effective ways to sustainably build our audiences. Bridget asked me a question the other day, which was genius. And um, we're thinking about doing a sales course at some point. Bridget's just like a sales genie, but um, which is so amazing. I love that. I love like that you're able to do that and like share your wisdom with that. So anyways, yeah. <laughs> But, um, wow. I just like, I asked you, where did your clients come from? That's what you did. You asked me, where did my clients come from when we were talking about sales? And I had never asked myself that question before, which is such a simple question. I've been in business for years and I'm like, I don't know (laughs) where do they come from? Woodwork. They just fly out of the woodwork. And so for me, I was thinking about, okay, well, mine comes from my communities of being in masterminds and it's masterminds are new audience members that I did not personally know. It's borrowing somebody else's audience because I, yep, joined their mastermind. They had a totally new pool of people that I'd never met before and podcasts. That's where my audience members are coming from, listening to my voice and saying, Hey, I heard you on this show. I just wanted to introduce myself or I heard about your program. And also, um, a lot come from referrals. Most of them, actually, most of my clients come from referrals, but referrals because I'm working with this person or I'm connected to this person through a mastermind or because they heard me on a podcast. So those are my platforms that are still working for me. And how can I continue to grow those types of streams? And so if podcasts are working for me like that, why wouldn't I try to get myself on more podcasts? Why not? And you know, something I've been like personally really thinking about is my husband and I like want to have a child eventually and which is so, so exciting, but there is this thought being this, you know, self-employed person. Oh my gosh, I need to really plan for that. And what's not sustainable if you are, for me, it wouldn't feel great is to Mm. be on social media all and have to rely on posting in the moment to make me money. Like this is actually such a good topic. These social platforms are made to keep us on there and made to keep us distracted so that they can make money. It's not for us. I know we all are like, these are for us. And yes, we can also, we can capitalize on them. We can leverage them, but they're not made for us. They're made for them. So when we are on these different platforms, it's like, how much time are we actually spending on them? And how much time can we move our attention to somewhere that's going to actually work? I have been listening to so many finance podcasts and YouTube channels. I'm telling you guys, I'm a finance bro. This is like my dream. I've always wanted this. You are. You're going to have like a separate like finance, well, real estate company, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's like the goal. So, you know, you guys heard it here first, but I've been so interested in learning about learning from these like finance guys, how to build generational wealth, how to build sustainable wealth for myself. And one of the things that one of them said, he was like, all right, I'm not giving you any financial advice, but my number one tip is to get rid of your Netflix subscription. He's like, it is actually not to save you money. This has nothing to do with saving you the $12.99 a month. Actually, it's due to the statistics. Most people spend, I think he said two to three hours a day on Netflix to unwind. And that time should be spent somewhere else. 
And I thought that was really, really interesting because, all right, fine. You want to unwind and watch TV. I freaking love TV. We were just talking about new girl. I love TV, but how can we take those two to three hours and turn it into one and turn those two hours into doing something that's going to make us money. And so maybe those two hours are spent pitching ourselves to podcasts instead, because that's going to bring them into our Instagram, into our threads account, into our other social media platforms, nurture them so that they convert easier to a client. Yeah. And like, that's such a sustainable strategy because we all know that let's go like for in the podcast lens for a moment. Yeah, totally. People who listen to certain shows are like groupies. Like for me, Huge I know groupies. when Luke Story's new episode is coming out. I know when Ashley Wood's new episode is coming out and you're sure as shit that I'm going to go onto my Spotify thing, go for a walk in the morning and listen to whoever she brings on that show because I like her. So if you are a business owner, you have mm-hmm. this ability to literally be getting in front of new audiences, but also for like SEO and having things live on yeah. the internet podcast editorial tv features live forever like beyond social that's why i'm frustrated with instagram it's like i just wrote some fire shit and no one's gonna see it again unless i repurpose it no one's gonna see it literally tomorrow within less than 24 hours no one's gonna pay attention to it no one's gonna pay attention to it and especially if you are a person that posts a lot yeah like we post a lot we're business owners No one's going to take the time to scroll down like to last year's 20, you know, 2023, July 7th post when they can just look at the last three posts that we've done or the pinned ones up top. Like, oh, these must be the important ones. I'm just going to look at those. So we need to just think about like what is sustainable when we're talking on podcasts, people binge, people binge, people find you on SEO. I listen to old shows all the time. And you know what I also do? I for friends that are like just getting into spirituality stuff. I have a few friends that, you know, converting over. They're like, what is manifestation, Lydia? I tell them to listen to the very first episode and go backwards for to be magnetic, Lacey Phillips stuff. I literally tell them start in episode one and work your way backwards because I think it describes like what manifestation is really well. Whereas like if somebody were to dive into the newer expanded episodes, it might be overwhelming because they talk about the application a lot that they have. But um, yeah, so I told them to go back to episode one and that is me as just like a user and a listener and a fan. This is so, so smart. And we also were interviewed yesterday on a podcast, like, cause we're not just talking about this this. And that was our first podcast together in business. Obviously you and I have done many a podcast separately, but we are also utilizing what we're talking about inside visibility on purpose. So don't think that like, we don't practice what we preach. It was so much fun to get in front of, you know, her audience and be able to talk about what we do, why it's different and just have a really real conversation. And that's the thing about podcasts. They build like no trust, like you storytell, you laugh, you can see them or you hear them it's just smart. I don't know. I just want to work smarter and not harder. And for anyone listening, like you're probably feeling the same way. You're like, I am sick of writing content and having it go nowhere. And I want to be smarter. Yep, exactly. And so for me, I chose not to download threads. I heard a lot of people say like, oh yes, I absolutely want to download it. This is cool. But I already am using a bunch of social platforms. Listen, I may be wrong. I may be taking off maybe the next best thing. And, but that's okay. I told myself, this is something that I've learned in business and in my life. Um, And if this resonates with you, I hope you take it. There's always the right time for everything. So if it doesn't feel good, always move forward with what feels good to you. Right now I'm feeling resistance and I'm like, I don't have to join today. But if I decide to join six months down the road, everyone's still going to be on the app. Everyone's still going to be there. I can still follow my friends or follow my business colleagues And they can do the same to me. And it's no big deal. And I don't think we should ever have FOMO or kick ourselves. I've heard people say like, oh, I wish I started a podcast when things like popped off in 2017, 18. It's like, maybe you weren't like ready to start a show though. Maybe you weren't ready to talk about what you talk about today. So just really listening to your own divine guidance. And then also, yes, working smarter, not harder. Um, Most of our audience members, most of our friends are our, our, what were we talking about? Members inside our Facebook group. I'm like, what is the word I'm trying to say? Our people, our our people, our groupies, our people (laughs) inside our visibility on purpose community. We're 
business owners making between four to six figures, I would say. And so all of us are business owners that are here to really go forth with our message and our impact. And you get to a point where you're just ready to work in a way that makes sense. So if you leave with anything today, I would strongly suggest you ask yourself the question, where are your sales coming from? Mm -hmm. And to remind everyone that social media absolutely has a place. And most of us are most familiar with social media, like selling strategies and posting content as a way to grow the audience. But there are other ways that have been here since the 1700s. <laughs> now that we figured that out, media started in the 1700s. Like, Jamie, least, can you Google this? <laughs> yeah, Jamie, um, can you get on this? That's what I see on DuckDuckGo right now. So we will, um, <laughs> we will look into that, but this is a sustainable strategy to help you grow your business, your audience that lives on the internet forever, as does your Instagram posts, but it's not searchable. And I think that's another thing I love about like podcasts and editorial and TV features. Someone yeah. can type in the name of the show, the name of the topic, the episode title, or one of the keywords in that title or your name. And those things come up. And I did a post the other day just to kind of like wrap things up here today. And I said, what happens when you Google your name? You know, obviously you want your website to show up first because that's like your quote unquote real estate property right there. I'm sure some of your socials are going to show up, but that's all you talking about your business. We all know that it's the smartest thing when you have other people talking yep. about your business, which is exactly what podcast editorial TV features. That's what it does for you on the Google search. My favorite thing to do with my clients after working with them for a while mm -hmm. is to Google their name and see what comes up. So it is, it is sexy. One of my clients has been a client for a year and a half now. And when we Google her name, Oprah, hello giggles, yeah. bustle, women's health ask men. These are the types of articles that come up when you type in her name. So if somebody's going to their review, like here, let's be honest, if we're buying into anything, we're going to look at reviews. I do that for everything. If we're on Amazon, I'm going to be looking at the reviews. If I'm going into a potential package, a service, a offer, whatever in the coaching industry, I'm going to look at their testimonials yeah. or I'm going to Google them. And then I'm going to look at where they've been featured. I'm going to listen to their podcast episodes. So those things all come up on Google and it also helps with the um, credibility and trust because now I know this person is associated with Oprah. I trust Oprah. And now I know they're associated with this big um, thought leader in their industry because they were on their podcast. I want to hang out with people that hang out with that person. Yep. So thinking about those things and like, what's going to help you when you type in, when I type in Lydia Bagarosa, it's not like my individual posts come up. It's just says like Instagram, my handle. Yeah, that's such a good point. Yeah. You're not seeing the individual post. No, you <laughs> you're just with. seeing someone's handle. You're like, all right. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Well, if you're listening to this live or you're listening to this in the next couple of weeks, we do have our next round of visibility on purpose starting mm -hmm. in August 9th, 2023. So yeah, send us a message on Instagram or in our Facebook group. We'd love to hear a little bit more about your business and where you're at. So we can see if this is a good fit for you. If you really want to move beyond just social media selling and you want to look at new strategies to expand your business, expand your reach, grow your audience, generate more income. And you want to do so in a cool community of pretty rad business owners across a vast number of different industries. We'd love to have you and invite you in to join us. Yeah. Thank you guys. We'll see Thanks you. So we'll see you on social media. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Lydia. Bye.